There's another one they're guiding in for inspection. Oh my goodness, look at that back tire. It's basically falling apart. Good morning everyone. Today I'm here with iAct and the aim of today is kind of in line with the PUV modernization program. They're basically going to try and catch those smelt belching and dilapidated old vehicles um, and issue them. Basically it's like a summons. They have to go to an LTO inspection center and have it checked within 24 hours to verify it's actually roadworthy, the emissions are okay and everything like that. Now over here you can see that USEC Tim Orbus is also here. Um, in fact, the operation hasn't officially started yet, so I'm just waiting for it to get going, but I thought I'd shoot my intro first, so let's go. So you can see this is the first one they've stopped. Um, the tires are completely bored, so if there was an emergency stop, he's basically just gonna skid. Um, so the Highway Patrol Group have pulled this one over and they're, uh, they're pointing out the defects now. If you look at the side tire here, you can see it's also ripped in the edges. So it's not just that front tire, there's other issues as well. And they're now going through some other checks of the lights and everything else that needs to be verified as working condition. And the LTO will be the ones to issue the ticket. So right now this LTO officer is getting this jeepney to go through the test with his lights at the front. And now he's also checking out the back ones to make sure everything's in order. Uh, it looks like everything's okay at the back, but there was one headlight that wasn't working. Although, in my experience, GPs never bother to turn their lights on at night anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter if it works or not. And you can see the driver's now fiddling with the light. Um, thing is, it's working now, but of course, as soon as he takes away and it vibrates, it's just gonna come loose again. Uh, let's see if he actually stops. You can see the front tire is pretty worn down. Um, part of the vehicle is falling apart. Oh yeah, you can see here the tire is cracked, so not very good condition at all. Around this side, the tire looks completely bald, worse than the other side. And I guess I'll also check the lights on this one also. Of course, as far as the passengers are concerned, this is a big waste of time when it's delaying them for their journey. But in reality, this is a safety thing. And we do see jeepneys all the time that have crashed and, you know, occasionally people die. So they might think, oh, this is wasting five minutes of my life, but it could actually be saving people's lives. And that's not even an exaggeration. Here's another one they're guiding in for inspection. Oh my goodness, look at that back tire. It's basically falling apart. Look at here at the bottom, the way that it's unraveling. Absolutely ridiculous. In any other country, they would take this vehicle off the road immediately. The front tires look just as bad, so good luck stopping in an emergency. And they're also pointing out that the driver doesn't have a seatbelt. Not only are they not wearing a seatbelt, but they don't have one. As for the lights, you can see there's nothing basically. Um, and I mean, that explains it, right? It's not just that they don't want to turn on the lights. Some of them just don't have working lights. So it's a mix, but either way, it ends up with lots of jeepneys driving around at night with no lights. So you've got a subpoena here. What's this all about? This subpoena is being issued to uh, motor vehicle operators apprehended for emitting too much smoke. Okay. They would be bringing this to the nearest LTO office where if they would be conducting this emission test. Okay, so there'll be a proper technical test at the OCR. Yeah, this is what they're going to present. Okay. Once the test is conducted and they pass, they would be given a clearance, okay. and then they would be released. But if they fail, the emission test that will be given by the LTO, they would be given another ticket. I mean, this really is a typical example of a jeepney that's on the road, an average jeepney. The tires are falling apart. The driver's wearing slippers or flip-flops, which is not safe because it can get stuck under the pedals. There's no uniform shorts. Uh, most of the lights don't work. Um, and possibly smoke belching, although that has to go through a proper process to be verified. But unfortunately, this is what the public are paying for right now. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way because as we've seen in Marikina, who's pretty much like the pioneer of the PUV modernization program, they can have modern vehicles that are safe they're more fuel efficient, the drivers actually get paid more, um, and all of this, and they still charge the same fare to the passenger. I know some of these Jeepney groups have been saying, oh, the fare is going to go up to 20 pesos, it's going to go up to 50 pesos. No, it's not, because they're already doing it in Marikina, and they've kept exactly the same fare. 8 pesos for the regular Jeepney, 10 pesos for the Aircon Jeepney. So, and that's modern safe vehicles. And in fact, I just found out that the driver also has an expired license also. Um, so it's really, you know, there's, there's pretty much nothing good about this vehicle. So we're now here with USEC Tim Orbus. What's today all about? Well, it's the first day of uh, implementing the, uh, what we call, Tanggal Bulok, Tanggal Usok uh, campaign, which is basically a campaign for roadworthiness. And uh, 
a cleaner smoke emission of our vehicles. Is there a primary target for today, for instance PUVs, or is it really for everyone on the road? Well, uh, primary, primarily uh, we're looking at uh, the PUVs, but you know, any, any vehicle that does not comply on the road definitely will, will, uh, will uh, you know, stop them. And I believe one of the things you're going to look out for is smoke belching, is that right? How do you verify if it's really, like, there must be a certain threshold or way to measure it, right? You know, uh, that's, that's the whole point, you know, uh, we, we, we get into all these uh, technical uh, uh, concerns that basically when we see something yeah. that, that we know is already a, a violator, yeah. it, goes to the, it has to go through the process. So what I'm telling my guys is that, you know, it's very clear he's violating. Let's stop him. Let's give him a summon to proceed immediately to the LTO, to the office, yeah. for it to be tested. Okay. Uh, yeah, twofold. Uh, it's immediate and it doesn't cause traffic. Right. And yeah. if proven correct, then then even the testing center that gives him a clearance yeah. will be flagged and, uh, you know, most likely be blacklisted. You know, the reality is that pretty much every jeepney they stop has poor tires and a number of other problems. Uh, it really is about trying to give this a refresh and you know that's why the PUV modernization program is really needed. So one of the MMDA guys now showing me the condition, the, the condition inside. The, you can see that it's rusted all the way through the floor basically. Uh, the tires are also not in great condition. You can see cracks all the way around. I'm not sure about the lights. At least one brake light's working, that's something. Oh yeah, look, you can see big holes in the floor there. And you can see right now the driver's giving the money back to the passengers because this one's going to be impounded by LTO. You know, I'm thinking about how I'm going to edit this video later and whether I'm going to include all of the footage because the reality is pretty much every jeepney they stop has poor tires, the handbrake doesn't work, most of the lights don't work, um, and they're belching smoke. So if I just use all the footage, all you're going to do is see the same thing over and over again. So I might actually just keep this video shorter because it will just be wasting your time. and. Uh, this is exactly why the PUV modernization is needed because this is just ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. It is possible to have modern vehicles that still charge the same fare for the riding public. Um, so yeah, I'm not surprised, but then I'm also a little bit surprised. I'm in the middle. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please give a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.